Let's be honest, SeaWorld's reputation has taken a nosedive in recent years. That much is evident by falling attendance and even falling expenditure by those who do visit. Why is that? Well, from a trainer dying at the fins of a killer whale to orcas with behavioral problems. Here are 15 things SeaWorld doesn't want you to know. Number 15. Orcas taken from wild, transported long distances. We take much of what we read on the internet with a grain of salt. It can be important when trying not to spread mistruths about any person, business, or corporation. Though it can be hard to deny what was thrown into the public arena when the documentary Blackfish came out. Sure, many people called it wildly inaccurate, misleading, and anything but fair and balanced, but there may just be some truth in what was being said by people in the know. One thing that came to light was about how SeaWorld used to replenish their orcas stock. Some sources claim that at least five, if not more, orcas housed at SeaWorld were taken from their families in the wild as babies from pods. Apparently, this process causes a great deal of pain, distress, and suffering for other members of the pod, such as the baby's parents. Once they are captured, they are then put in small, concrete tanks. The documentary also outlined that some orcas at SeaWorld were captured in Iceland and transported thousands of miles in small tanks before arriving to entertain the masses. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Orca lifespans are shorter in captivity. Many animals thrive in captivity. In fact, a study published in Scientific Reports stated that up to 80% of mammals live longer in captivity than in the wild. However, orcas aren't so lucky. In the wild, the average female can live up to 100 years. That's a century of swimming around freely with her family living her best life. Males lag a little way behind that, but still live for an impressive 60 to 70 years. In captivity, though, many online resources state that the average age of death for an orca at SeaWorld is just 14 years. A study in 1995 carried out by Robert Small and Douglas DeMaster even found that the mortality rate of captive orcas was 2.5 times higher than wild ones. When transferring orcas to captivity, certain life stages could also impact lifespans, such as at weaning and sexual maturity ages. That's not to say that would always be the case, though. Robert and Douglas went on to say that as husbandry improved and more orcas were born in captivity, survivorship rates may just equal or surpass those of wild orcas. I guess time will tell. Number 13. Hungry Orcas the documentary Blackfish opened many people's eyes to the lives of orcas living in captivity and the wild. As heartbreaking as the documentary was, it might alleviate some of your suffering to know that some of the facts within it may not be accurate. So I, I guess what I'm saying is that something that SeaWorld does want you to know, they don't starve their orcas. Within the documentary, it was claimed that SeaWorld trainers would starve the orcas to make them perform. The idea was that if their daily caloric intake was reduced, they would be more food motivated to do what was expected of them. Former SeaWorld trainer John Jett said as much in a blog article on Voice of the Orcas, although both current and former trainers at SeaWorld said that wasn't the case. They said that any trainer who held back food was a poor trainer who did not use techniques taught in the SeaWorld system. Videos have shown orcas performing without food. Instead, they are rewarded with rubs, ice, toys, and praise. SeaWorld also stated in their animal training info book that orcas aren't rewarded for incorrect behavior, but their food intake is not altered based on their behavior. Number 12. Behavioral Problems 
Any animal, be it the family cat or an orca, can have behavioral problems. But the issue here is that SeaWorld is already under scrutiny. If their orcas have behavioral problems, they'll be on show for the world to see. Any search on the internet regarding aggressive orcas at SeaWorld will bring up a wealth of information. We're not going to assume what's correct and what isn't because only SeaWorld management would know. But what we will tell you is that some of the available information is pretty heartbreaking. Tilikum is probably one of the most well-known orcas at SeaWorld, but not for the reasons he should be. He spent some of his life at SeaWorld Orlando and was captured in Iceland in 1983. Attacks by orcas on humans in the wild are rare, but as of 2019, four human deaths have been associated with orcas in captivity. Three of those deaths involved Tilikum. In 1991, a marine biology student fell into the pool containing three orcas, including Tilikum. They submerged the student and dragged her around the pool. Eight years later, a 27-year-old man entered Tilikum's tank. His body was found on Tilikum's back. In 2010, a 40-year-old trainer was rubbing Tilikum when he grabbed her ponytail and pulled her into the water. Number 11. Flying Employees John Hargrove is a whistleblower and former trainer at SeaWorld, and he's always had some pretty damning things to say about SeaWorld and its practices. Once again, we're not going to say whether he's right or wrong because we don't know, but we are going to share with you what he said because it's something SeaWorld wouldn't want you to know if it were true, of course. He said in a Reddit post that cover-ups by trainers are encouraged. According to John, the poor water quality causes sea lions and walruses to go blind. If any of the animals are sick, trainers and SeaWorld employees aren't allowed to tell guests under any circumstances. But what if they're acting strangely? Well, according to John, they have to lie to cover up the strange behavior. John also said that because of the lack of mental stimulation that orcas get, they grind their teeth and wear them down. Trainers were made to hide the fact. They would drill holes into orcas' teeth and flush them out every day to stop abscesses from forming. There are even pictures of drilled orca teeth on the internet, although it's unknown whether they're related to SeaWorld or not. Number 10. Zinc Oxide for Sunburns on the SeaWorld of Hurt website, a site with the motto, Where Happiness Tanks, an unknown writer outlined how workers would cover sunburned orcas with black zinc oxide. Because it was black, it would hide any blistering or burns that the orcas were subjected to from the intense Orlando and San Diego sunshine. When this information came to light, PETA filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Agriculture. They asked the agency to take action and give the animals relief because it was within the Federal Animal Welfare Act that animals had to have sufficient shelter from direct sunlight. A former SeaWorld trainer, Carol Ray, said that when she used to apply the zinc oxide to one particular male orca, the layers of his burnt skin would peel off in her hands. Given that sunshine isn't just present at SeaWorld, how do orcas avoid sunburn in the wild? Well, more often than not, wild orcas will spend around 95% of their day submerged at depths of up to 1,000 feet, which reduces the impact of UV radiation. Tanks in SeaWorld are shallow, so they don't have an option to dive deeply to avoid the rays. Number 9. SeaWorld San Diego receives citation from OSHA. Ever since the Blackfish documentary was released in 2013, and probably even before then, SeaWorld has been under scrutiny. It had a massive effect on the park's revenue and attendance, and they hired a new CEO. Although, the timing may have just been a coincidence. Given all the controversy, safety and animal welfare groups have been checking their practices with a fine-tooth comb. Then, in 2015, OSHA got involved. 
They cited SeaWorld San Diego for improper training of whale workers, which came with a fine of almost $26,000. The fine was in response to OSHA's belief that SeaWorld San Diego was not training its employees to interact with its whales safely. Their investigations began in November 2014, and they focused on people who swam with the orcas in the medical pool, rode on them, and were present on the slideouts with them in the pools. In total, four citations were issued, which SeaWorld, according to a spokesman, was going to appeal. SeaWorld's written statement was that their highest priority is the safety of guests, team members, and the welfare of their animals. Number 8. Trainer Danger no job is without risks. Even an office worker can sustain a paper cut that becomes infected and causes severe harm. But there is undoubtedly a lot of danger involved in being an orca trainer, and that danger has been highlighted in a SeaWorld safety review. This safety review came about after a SeaWorld Orlando trainer, Don Brancho, was killed by the 12,000-pound orca Tillicum when he dragged her underwater. The report focused on the three sea World Marine Park's history and changes that could be made and are being made even today. There's also a separate profile with information about the orca Tillicum, which outlines his behavioral tendencies and history. The profile doesn't note that his trainer, Don, was killed. As it turns out, Tillicum isn't the only orca that could pose a danger to his trainers. Another orca, 9,000 pound Ulysses, has a profile that states trainers were made to stop swimming with him at the end of 2006 after an incident. The profile didn't outline what that incident was. The same goes for Q-Quad. Trainers were not allowed in the water with this 8,000-pound orca, but the report doesn't state why. Number 7. Artificial Insemination for Breeding SeaWorld has done a lot in recent years to improve its image and put animal welfare first. They stopped receiving wild-caught orcas, which was a big step to take, but then they turned to artificial insemination for a while, and it's a little bit disturbing. According to anonymous former SeaWorld trainers from the Orca Project, orcas are trained to float on their backs and present their family jewels to the trainers. And that's where we'll leave the rest to your imagination. But let's just say it involves the goal of trying to get an orca pregnant. More often than not, the pregnancy wouldn't be successful, but sometimes it was. And that was potentially enough to keep their orca stocks up. Tillicum, the orca, was put up for sale by Sealand, which closed its doors. SeaWorld purchased him for the breeding program, and his sperm was put to use. According to some sources, around 54% of SeaWorld's orcas had his genes. Former SeaWorld trainer Jeffrey Ventry in Blackfish said his semen is worth a lot of money. The whales, not Jeff's. It was also stated that artificial insemination is performed on orcas far younger than the age they would naturally conceive in the wild. Number 6. Dorsal Fin Collapse Something you may not have noticed before is that the dorsal fins of captive orcas tend to be more collapsed in their position than those of wild orcas. This loss of structural integrity, called LSI, can cause a partial or total collapse of the dorsal fin, which may be associated with the many problems orcas experience in captivity. Experts say that the collapsed dorsal can be a symptom or sign of another problem. It might be related to the inadequate depth of their tanks, which causes sun exposure and a lack of natural water pressure. Extreme boredom may even play a part, with many orcas spending time swimming or floating at or on the water surface where there's no dorsal fin support. Factors like fitness, stress, age, reduced swimming abilities, water chemicals, thermoregulation, food dehydration, and medication could also be related to this unique phenomenon. LSI affects all captive male orcas who either have a partially or fully collapsed dorsal fin, and some females. SeaWorld has done some research into it, but their response focuses on the fin's shape rather than what causes it. Number 5. Improper Drug Use have you ever noticed how there's no pharmacy in the ocean? Yeah, orcas aren't lining up to receive their daily dose of benzos to calm them down. There's simply no need. 
in captivity, things may be much different. According to former trainers who spoke to online resources like The Dodo, whales were on medication for a whole host of reasons. Former trainer John Hargrove, who worked at both the San Antonio and San Diego marine parks for 14 years, said some whales had been on medication every day of their life. John Jett, Carol Ray, and Samantha Berg, who were also all former trainers, said some of the drugs they administered were so powerful that even the people administering them could be at risk. Orcas were given antipsychotics to reduce their testosterone levels and benzodiazepines to calm them down. Animal Welfare Institute mammal scientist Naomi Rose spoke to people from the dodo and said even though people thought these drugs were given to the orcas to help them stay healthy, their captivity in a tank was the root of the problem. She said, and I quote, I can respond with confidence that all of these medications are given as a result of problems associated with captivity. Number 4. Chlorine and Water Quality SeaWorld and other marine parks put a lot of effort into maintaining the water quality and temperatures for the animals within it. After all, it can be pretty hard to see an orca swimming majestically and performing tricks if the pool they live in is murky and covered in algae. To combat this problem, they use chlorine. While that helps visitors see what's going on, it seems to be at the detriment to both trainers and the marine creatures, according to some sources. Many former SeaWorld trainers have said that orcas often have mucus leaking from their eyes, which doesn't appear to be a common symptom in wild animals. Whenever there's been a spike in chlorine levels, both the trainers and orcas suffer. Former SeaWorld trainer John Hargrove said when he worked at Marine Land Antibes in France, a chlorine overdose was so bad the whales couldn't open their eyes, and the skin on their heads and backs began to peel. John suffered as well, as his eyes were so severely burned that he had to shut out all light and wasn't able to open his eyes for a week. Number 3. PETA Got Involved all doesn't appear to be well with SeaWorld and PETA, an animal rights group. In 2012, PETA was outraged when a killer whale, 11-year-old Nikai, knocked into a pool barrier and sustained a head injury that went through flesh and blubber. But according to PETA, a whistleblower stated two other whales attacked Nikai, causing the horrific wound. PETA filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Agriculture saying that SeaWorld was housing incompatible mammals in the same space, which is an Animal Welfare Act violation. They said SeaWorld had a long history of housing incompatible orcas in the same space, which resulted in stress, agitation, serious injury, and death. A spokesperson for the UC Davis Department of Wildlife, Fish, and Conservation Biology said injury with a pool barrier might have caused the damage, but something had to have pulled the chunk of flesh off his lower jaw. SeaWorld said they are committed to the physical, social, and mental welfare of its animals, and that Nakai was was on antibiotics and vets were pleased with the healing progress the orca was making. Number 2. Blackfish Gate The general public gets a lot of their information on various topics from the internet and documentaries. SeaWorld would probably hate to admit that Blackfish, the documentary we've briefly mentioned before, had quite the impact on their image and bottom line. The American documentary film was released in 2013 and followed Tillicum and Captive Killer Whale controversy. It was nominated for a BAFTA award for Best Documentary. Even though some of the statements made in the documentary may not be factually accurate, many people turned their backs on the marine park once they watched it. Once again, we're not going to speculate on whether anyone in that film or anyone who has ever spoken out about the marine park is right or wrong. But regardless, the numbers speak for themselves. SeaWorld Entertainment saw an 84% drop in their net second quarter income. In 2014, it was $37.4 million and dropped to $5.8 million in the second quarter of 2015. Their revenue fell by 3% in the second quarter of 2015 compared to the same quarter of 2014. Even visitor numbers fell, with a decrease of around 2% or 100,000 fewer visitors. Number 1. SeaWorld Lost Support and Partners 
When Blackfish was released to the public, the public was outraged. They showed this by refusing to visit the three marine parks ever again. But it wasn't just the general public that vowed to withdraw their support, so too did big name musicians and corporate sponsors. The Bare Naked Ladies, the Beach Boys, and Willie Nelson are a few of the many musicians who were booked to perform in the park, but according to online sources, were no longer going to. Three class action lawsuits were also brought against SeaWorld for fraud and manipulation. These suits claimed that SeaWorld ensured the orca's well-being to park visitors, but that potentially wasn't the case at all if Blackfish was anything to go by. Big name partners like British Airways, Southwest Airlines, and Virgin America also abandoned their contracts, while Mattel, the manufacturer and creator of Barbie, also withdrew support. This meant they had discontinued their pop popular SeaWorld trainer Barbie item. Many celebrities have also been vocal with their boycotting of the marine park. Russell Brand said, Don't go to SeaWorld, a stain upon humanity posing as entertainment. Matt Damon also said that he's never been a fan of places like that. I think they should just shut them all down, he said. I'd be interested to know whether your opinion of SeaWorld has changed in recent years. Maybe you've learned something new today that left a sour taste in your mouth, or you may have watched the documentary. Have you been to SeaWorld before, and would you go back? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!